What's going on everybody? This is Boonjamin Bok Choi bringing you another F1 2020 weekly event video. This week is a classic car challenge at Singapore, C1 uh, class. I was really hoping for another overtaking challenge, but this is, I think, the fourth quality and race week in a row. Uh, but it did force me to kind of practice at a track that I don't normally drive at, um, even though it is in a classic car. I do feel like I understand the track a lot better now. Uh, so I went with the 2009 Braun GP using a setup that Yarno Opmer used for his world record lap in time trial. Just a few little changes on my end. I changed the off-throttle diff, lowering it from 75 to 55. Front anti-roll bar, upping it from 5 to 7. And front suspension, lowering it from 2 to 1. The car is a little understeery with uh, the Yarno Opmer setup. So this is just my attempt to create a little bit more rotation through some of the slower corners. I also lowered, I'm sorry, I, I raised the brake force from 89 to 95 just to get a little bit more braking power um, to slow the car down into the, some of the slower corners. And it, it kind of suits my driving style a little bit better. The original setup is a really good, really good base to start at though, but definitely play around with it and try to make it suit your own driving style so you'll probably see that a lot of a lot of guys have pretty much picked one of two cars they've either gone with the 2010 red bull or the 2009 braun and the 2010 red bull has lower top speed but it's definitely more nimble through the corners and because of that um, it's probably the safer choice for a lot of drivers that don't have too much experience with the classic cars um, it's it's more user friendly to, to, to newbies um, it's also closer to the 2020 f1 car handling model than the 2009 braun is uh, so if you're not too experienced with cars and you don't really feel that confident with them uh, the, the red bull is probably the better choice for you uh, the braun is not quite as nimble through the corners but it has higher top speed and uh, definitely handles better than the 98 McLaren or the Ferrari F2004, but definitely not nearly as good around corners as the Red Bull is. So, uh, like I said, it does have a lot of understeer, probably due to the uh, double diffuser creating a lot more rear downforce. Um, so it, it is more difficult to handle, but it will ultimately net you faster lap times out of the two cars if you can kind of uh, wrangle it in. So we're just kind of jumping right into quali right now. I, I do normally throw up some practice laps or, or something before, beforehand, but I uh, figured I'd probably just get right to the point here. Um, I did find that I needed to break a lot earlier for corners than the modern F1 cars. So usually in the 2020 cars, you can break a little bit later into the red part of the racing line if you're running with the racing line assist. In the brawn, you definitely need to brake before the red starts, preferably right where it starts to turn yellow or orange. Uh, you can probably go a little bit later if you'd like, but I found that uh, I, I've got too much understanding in the car if I, I try to brake late to save a little bit, to, bit of time. And it was probably, it, it was better for me personally anyway, braking a little bit earlier. And you might be watching this video and seeing that I'm not uh, using a lot of curb on the apexes, but you definitely can take a lot of curb. Um, I just wanted to play it safe, so I didn't really take too much curb on the apex of the corner. But watching uh, Yarno Watmir and Tom97's videos, and even uh, James from Veloce, they they take so much curb on their apexes and it seems to save them a lot of time so definitely play around with that uh, be sure to slow down enough to where you can get on the throttle as soon as you're hitting the apex or right after the apex um, i found that i lost a lot of time because i let the car coast for a little bit longer than i should have um, you should really either be on the brake or on the throttle um, trying to minimize coasting as much as possible. The longer, you're, the longer you coast, the more time you're just going to lose. Um, so uh, for some of the slower corners, like right after the bridge, uh, I've done a little bit of experimenting going down to first gear or staying in second gear to make those really slow corners. Uh, it, it does give you a little bit extra rotation going down to first, but I feel like 
you can definitely take the corner faster if you stay in second so it just depends i'd say in quality stay in second for those corners in the races you know if you're going in a little bit too fast or you overshoot your braking zone definitely downshift the first gear to get some more rotation on the car get the uh, engine braking to slow you down a little bit more so some tips for the races the Tire degradation is pretty much like the McLaren and the 98 McLaren and F2004, uh, where it it doesn't really degrade like the 2020 compounds. So definitely fuel your car up for a few laps in qualifying, and you can definitely take it out for more than one lap. Personally, for me, I felt or I experienced that after one lap, the time lost from tire deg was only one or two hundredths of a second really negligible if you if you know what you're doing you can make up way more time and and you know get more time on track if you just stay out on one set of tires for two or three laps instead of wasting out laps and in laps just for one hot lap um, the tire deg is not really high enough that you really need to come in and change after every lap uh, I haven't really done much tests uh, on the fuel. I feel like you can still run it in rich mode uh, for a good chunk of the race, and I have to worry about engine overheating. Obviously, if you're going to be following behind somebody really closely the entire race, it's going to overheat no matter what. But I think it's just like the 2004 Ferrari in that if you're in clean air and you're using rich fuel mode, it's not going to make your engine overheat or anything like that. Um, I haven't done many tests on fuel load, but I feel like you could probably get away with just one extra lap worth of fuel uh, to get you through a race. Uh, but you guys can do those tests on your own. And uh, I'm going to just leave you guys with my fastest lap here. I don't want to be talking over it. I just want to play it at full volume so you guys can kind of get an idea of the downshifts and what I'm doing to get the time that I got. Uh, so I'll just leave you guys here with the fastest lap that I did in quali and hopefully you pick up on one or two things. All right, guys, so that is it. That is our fastest lap. And as you can see uh, from the excitement, it was good enough for P1 at the time. I finished the qualifying round on Tuesday. I'm recording this Wednesday afternoon. I just jumped on to see if the rankings had changed, and I dropped down to P5 once all of the typical really fast drivers jumped on. I'm sure they're not using the racing line, but I still am pretty proud of this time. Um, I'm better at this track now than I was uh, on Sunday night before I'd put in a few hours of practice. So it should still be pretty good enough for top 15, top 20, which should uh, net me pole for any race that I do. So um, 
yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, but thank you guys for checking this video out. Um, good luck on your qualies and races this week. If you've done your quali uh, round already, please let me know how you, you guys did. Uh, I, if you haven't done it yet, I hope my video has helped you out with one or two things that might make your laps a little bit faster. Uh, stay tuned for some more videos. Remember to eat your bok choy. And if you think I've earned it, please leave a like, comment, or subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave them in the comments section, and I will do my best to get back to all of you. Thank you.